what's up, happy people, and welcome back to Tip Lady Catch and Release. So today is Sunday, and that means it is the verse of the week. And today I would like to talk about worship. Now God's really been speaking this to me for about, about 80 days now. The word, holy. You know, Revelation 4.8 says that there are these four living creatures, all covered with eyes, inside and out. But what caught my eye is that it says day after day and night after night they kept on saying holy 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 is the Lord God the Almighty One the one who was who is and who still is to come and God's been speaking to me things through that verse so sometime in sometime in November I wrote down some notes and I just told God whenever and wherever you want these words to be spoken just let it be. And I'm, I'm not joking. I tell you all the truth. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. Like, no recollection of it. December, January. I totally forgot about it. Like, sorry God. But I forgot. No recollection of it whatsoever. But then sometime last month, the lady that, that things at my youth group came up to me and asked me if I'd speak something or do a video or something like that. And I'll tell you all the truth, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll pray about it, but but you know how we do. I, I really had already made up in my mind that I was not doing that, but, but I did pray. And after I prayed, God reminded me of those notes I had wrote down. He told me to speak that. But not only to speak that, because I would have probably just done it in a, in, in a video for him, but he said to do it in person. I was like, <laughs> yeah, God, that's funny, but, but no, I'm not doing that. But, um, but no, I'm, I'm not doing that. But let me tell you something. God does not take our no for an answer, because before I was born, before I had an opinion, God had a purpose. Come on, somebody. What I'm really trying to emphasize for you here is that going up there was not something easy for me. It wasn't. It was not something I wanted to do. Like, maybe if it was you, you would have had no problem doing that. But it wasn't for you, it was for me. Until one day the Holy Spirit just told me that I was thinking about it backwards. He said to do a video at Pike Youth, but to have Pike Youth be the video. He told me specifically what to say. He gave me the notes that I wrote down almost 80 days earlier. And he promised me that for as long as I speak, that the kingdom of heaven will come down into that room and things that I can't even imagine will happen will happen. So this past Wednesday, I got up and I spoke those words that God had instructed me to speak. I got a video of it here, so, um, so let's watch it and we'll be right back. Hey, so what's up? So God told me a word to share for y'all and... Here's what he told me. So he told me that as we come into times like this, as we come into these moments of crazy worship that we're going to come into here, he said that he wants to do this, wants to meet each and every one of you. But when he comes, he finds us with our arms crossed, trying to stand up. He wants to do great things, but it's us that don't want to come to him. And I get that, I understand that. We're all teenagers here. But what I want you to understand today is what Revelation 15:4 says. It says, who will not fear you, Lord? Who will not glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous deeds have been revealed. Y'all, Revelation also says that before the throne are four living creatures. And they're continuously, day and night, night and day, crying out, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God, the Almighty One. They continuously do that. Day and night, night and day is what the Bible says. So they're continuously doing that. I think that we can do that for five minutes, right? Like we can do that for five minutes. So it's okay to look crazy and crazy. It's okay to be crazy and crazy. He told me that we have a choice. It's a choice to either look crazy and crazy or be crazy not to. That is the choice that he gives us. So as we come into this, think about that. Think about it is your choice. You can either choose to praise the God of the universe, God who created the heavens and the earth and the praise him. Or to be crazy not to. That's a choice that you get. So as we come to this, just be thinking about that. Yeah, so so like I said in the video, we have a choice. 
We have a choice to either look crazy and praise Him, or be crazy not to. And that phrase that God gave me has really just wrecked me. Y'all, this word is not just for teens, but God said that the church has to learn to be holy again. Because holy is the only song that they sing in heaven. So if that's what they're singing up there, we better learn it down here. Right? Because the fact of the matter is, that verse I read says that they are saying, Holy, holy, holy. When they say that, when they say holy, 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 three times in a row, that is the only time in the Bible that a word is repeated three times. Y'all, there are 66 books in the Bible. There are 783,187 words in the Bible. And only three of those words are repeated. And that is holy. Why don't we talk about this more? Why don't we really understand this? Why don't we teach this to our kids? Why don't, why don't we understand this? Why don't more people preach this? Why? Why don't we learn this? Why? Why don't we really understand the revelation that God is giving us through the book of Revelation? God said people don't talk about it because they don't understand it. So I prayed as I was reading the book of Revelation that God would give me my own revelation. I prayed for him. I actually prayed for him to show me how I could be holy. But he said, no, Z, you got it all wrong. You can't be holy. You can't be set apart. Because, listen, you can't be holy and you can't be set apart because you try to do it without me. Understand what I'm saying. Here, here, here. This might make you understand it a little bit more. The Greek word for holy is ios. And ios means sacred in the Greek. And sacred means the absolute moral purity of God, and also the absolute moral distance between God and his human creatures. Guess he wrote that down. Google, you know. So, so according to the world, we can't be holy. But that doesn't make sense, because if we understand what Revelation 22 says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. So that means that there has to be holy people on the earth. We just can't be holy without God, because it's a God's holy people. You see, God is the only one who has the power to make us righteous. God has to make us sanctified. God has to make us set apart. God has to make us holy. And that is the very reason why Jesus came to this earth. He lived to die and he died to live. He was sinless, the perfect sacrifice that hung upon that cross. He was holy and he did all that so that he could make us holy too. I know that because 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, because of what God has done, you belong to Christ Jesus. He has become God's wisdom for us. He makes us righteous with God he makes us, get this, holy and set apart. And because of that, because he has made us holy, we need to start living holy. You're like, oh, I go to church on Sunday. No, that is not what I'm talking about. Jesus did not die for you to stand up for 15 minutes on Sunday morning with your hands in your pockets. God told me, and I'm going to read this, because this is how he said it. He said that you don't know holy. You don't know how to simply cry out holy. You don't know how to humble yourself and tell God how holy he is. You don't know how to. You don't know how to set apart that time to tell God that he's holy. You're like, well, I wake up early. I don't have to. I don't care if while you're brushing your teeth in the morning, instead of singing ABCs, you sing holy, holy, holy. Tell God how holy, wonderful, worthy he is. We need to start singing out holy. We need to start living holy. Because I truly do believe that that, that is the purest form of worship. It's just... Speaking in the language of heaven. Like, like we try and dress up worship too much. We try to put too much frosting on the cake. We need to get back to the rawest form, the purest form. Like, like Paul and Silas at midnight. Y'all know the story. They're in jail, and they're just singing out hymns of God, praising his name. And God told me that that's the form of worship we have to get back to. Now, I'm not saying 
I'm not saying you have to go to jail to do it, but what I am saying is we don't need all the lights, we don't need all the smoke, we don't need all the extra stuff to worship God, because something, something supernatural happens when we don't need all the accessories, but we need His presence. Now, I'm not against all the other stuff. I mean, lights and smoke, that's all cool, that, that, that all looks good. But what I want you to understand is that you have to be careful when you start doing all that stuff. Because then God has become an addition. The reason we worship is to glorify and lift up and extol God. To magnify His name. So He has to be the main thought, not an afterthought. And whatever else happens, whatever else happens in the, in the show, I mean, whatever, we have to remember that it's all about Him. And I'll be the first to admit, Worship is hard. I mean, you don't always feel like doing it. But what I found out is it's supposed to be hard. So you can't do it without God. Come on, somebody. Anytime you feel anytime you feel like you can't do it on your own. Anytime you feel overwhelmed. Anytime you don't have the answer of what you're supposed to be doing. You're probably not supposed to be doing it on your own anyways. This applies to everything in the Christian faith. We're supposed to be living a life that is dependent on Him. God does not want you to do anything without Him. So while you're over here and you're wondering why everything in your life is going crazy, why nothing ever good happens to you, you come to worship and you aren't paying any attention, you're on your phone, you're, you're waiting on the Lord, you're waiting for His presence to come. Well, I got an idea from heaven. What happens when you praise before the presence? Come on, somebody. Want me to tell you when worship gets real? Worship gets real when you walk into that job. Come on, somebody. Worship gets real. When you walk into that house, my mom and dad are a testimony of this this past week. When you walk into your house and your kids are driving you up that wall, but your hands go up and your voice goes up saying, God, I thank you. Uh-oh. God, I thank you for who you are, what you're doing, and where you got me right now. Come on, somebody. What happens when you're in prison and, in, and instead of cussing, uh-oh, you're like, God, I thank you. God, I praise you that you are holy. And when you don't feel like praising him, and you don't feel like raising your hands, but, but you probably feel like raising a certain figure. I'll be real with y'all. I've seen the things that you go through in a week. So this message might be a little harsh. I pray to God that it's an eye-opener for you. But God, so that somebody has to tell you, y'all, this, this message might have, might have been a little harsh today. I pray to God that it was a an eye-opener to you, an eye-opener that you need to start crying, crying out, singing out the praises of heaven, singing out, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God, the Almighty One. Y'all, I might be going through hell, but He's still holy. Like, come on, somebody. I want to leave you today knowing that whether you worship Him or not, the Bible says that, that the rocks will begin to cry out, that the oceans will roar His praises, that the mountains will bow to His feet if you don't praise Him. But you do have a choice. And if I'm being truthful, which I always am with y'all, there have been times in my life where I've chosen to obey my feelings over what my father doesn't... Watch this doesn't even require, but he requests. Today, I want to let you know that God is requesting your praise. He is requesting your worship. He's requesting for you right there, watching right now, to live a holy life, to live a, a sanctified life, to live the life that he died on the cross for you to live. So I'm just encouraging you. I can't do it for you. This is the best I can do. I don't know who's watching this, but this right now is the best I can do. It's what God told me to do. So if you have to go through, watch this video again. Understand that He is holy. He is worthy. And we just need to sing Ios, Ios, Ios out to Him. We need to start singing the language of heaven. So do that all this week. He is holy. So thanks for watching Tip Lady Catch and Release. Take care. God bless. And we are gone. Yes, up, guys. And my friend Bad, and he says, let he subscribe.
Oh, oh, me and my friend Bob, 